Hello guys, welcome back to Zeph TV. Today we'll be talking about a game called War Tales. So this game is actually a new game came out uh, on Steam. Uh, it's an alpha release game where they let you control a group of mercenary in a RPG open world real-time strategy grid-based game. So if you ever played games like, for example, Battle Brothers, this is almost uh, similar to that, but in a better graphic version of it. So there are certain things that I'm going to be talking about today, which is uh, the tips and tricks on how to feel your very own mercenary group, either as a new player or an old player. And if you have ever played this game before, you will know that the game is actually not a very easy game. It is quite challenging. And so I'm going to be telling you the tips and tricks on how to make your gameplay a much, much more easier and smooth experience. So the first thing we're going to be talking about, traits. So when you start your character, when you first start your playthrough, you will acquire four characters. So when you start four characters, what you need to take note of is your happiness. So the happiness and traits come hand in hand. So what you're going to do is you're going to check you have four characters and your happiness is at three. And it says that your comfort required is negative three, which means each character requires comfort. So why is your comfort negative three instead of negative four? It means one of your character have a positive trait that says stoic. So what you're going to do is whenever you start a new game or you, you start when you start your first uh, playthrough, always look for characters that have the, the, the stoic trait. So the stoic trait actually gives you really good uh trait for your whole gameplay because it as as the as the trait sta stated not included in the needs of the troops happiness. So basically if you have like you know six uh, companions in your roster and all six of them have stoic uh trait which it means that your happiness is not going to decrease. So it means that with this stoic you can feel an unlimited amount of companion in your roster because in in as of now the game itself has like a soft cap where they where they cap you at around like seven companions if you do not uh if you do not follow the 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 stoic trait so for example if you have like seven uh companions that have different types of traits that is not stoic you can have up to seven units and then uh there'll be no negative effect but if you have like more than seven units the unhappiness will happen. So happiness will reduce and then that when that happens, there will be like uh the probability of your companion leaving your 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 roster. So what you're gonna do is every time when you start your new roster, you know you every time you start your new game, what you're gonna do is always check for traits. So if you have like like for example if you have like no units with the trait uh with the stoic trait, what you're gonna do is just recreate recreate uh your characters. So it, for example, if you have one that is that is okay, but if let's say you are not uh, satisfied, you would like you know maybe two or three. All you have to do is just continue recreating your character until you're satisfied. Because there are only, I think like a few, uh, there are like up to ten, maybe up to ten positive traits and up to ten negative traits. But your character, your first four characters always will have positive traits. So you have like one out of ten chances of getting stoic. So what you're gonna do is. If you like, you know, your 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 starting companions to have multiple stoics, so that you have more happiness for you to recruit more units, all you have to do is recreate your character and recreate to the point that you know you are satisfied with it. Alright, so the next tip that I'm going to be talking about is profession. So when you start your game, uh, throughout your whole game, uh, playthrough, you're gonna have you're gonna unlock multiple professions. So profession is actually a neat mechanic that the game War Tales added into the game that lets you increases your attributes of each character. So for example, here I have an archer here that has a tinkerer profession. So why tinkerer profession? Because tinkerer profession provides critical hit. So each profession actually gives you different sort of stats. So for example, if let's say you have an assassin, an assassin requires you know dexterity or maybe uh, uh, critical strikes. So you're gonna give him like you know professions that befits him. For example, thief. Thief gives you dexterity as as well as a critical hit. And then uh, for example, you have like a, a swordsman. 
if a swordsman you if you like to increase his uh, damage you you need to increase his strength so in order to increase his strength the sort of profession that you're going to give it to him will be blacksmith because blacksmith provides strength so each profession actually gives you different stats so what you're going to do is just take a time to see what sort of uh, stats they provide and what sort of profession that you would like to provide to your companion it's that simple Right, so the next tip that I'm going to be talking about is black market trading as well as plundering. So in War Tales, there will be refugees whenever you see the roads. So what we're going to do is whatever loot that you have, you're going to be talking to the refugees and then you're going to sell the items to the refugees. So refugees in the game are like, you know, your basic peasant units, uh, peasant faction. So what you can do is when you talk to them, you can either attack them or give them food in order for you to gain influence. But you do not want to do that. So what you're going to do is you're going to sell multiple items to them. So for right now, I have like 4,500 crowns. So I'm going to sell up to 5,500. Look at this. I'm going to sell. So I'm going to sell my items to the point that I do not need sell all this. So I have like 5,400. So I've gained like 900 crowns from them, 900 golds from them. So what I'm, gonna, what I'm gonna do is, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna attack them. Because attacking civilians or attacking refugees in war tales do not commit, it's not considered as a crime. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna fight them. Right, so now, after killing the refugees, what you're going to be gaining from them would be the loot that you've sold to them. Now, I'll bet the loot are considered as stolen goods. So what you're going to do is you're going to be gaining a lot of gold. So what you're going to do is just all the refugees is your best sort of uh, income generator. So what you're going to do is whenever there are refugee groups or refugee caravans, just, you know, farm them, all right? So what you're going to do is you, you've sold them stuff and then you've defeated them and then right now you're taking the stuff back. So they're considered as stolen goods. So what you're going to do is, right, so now you have stolen goods. So you've sold them once and then you defeated them and you stole back the goods. So what you're going to do is, click M, look at a map. So if you have explored a place called Lakeside Camp, if you haven't defeated them yet you haven't completed the mission yet what you're gonna do is you're gonna head there because this is actually the only place so far that lets you buy and sell stolen goods without you know any repercussion without any consequences because you know you've stolen stuff and then you can't sell it you know to the other people so what you're gonna do is any stolen stuff that you have that you you're not gonna be wearing or anything you're gonna be selling it to this lakeside camp. So you're gonna head there, and this is basically like your black market trader. So you're gonna be talking to this guy called Ferris. So you're gonna be talking to him, and you're you're just gonna be selling stuff to him. So you're gonna be selling back the stuff. Uh, the stuff are gonna be sold at a cheaper price. I think it's cheaper by twenty five percent, but you're still getting, getting gold, you know, after selling it. So for example, originally I had. 4,500 crowns. So I've sold the stuff and then I've defeated the refugees and took back the stuff and I've sold it back again to the black market and I have 6,000 crowns right now. So from, you know, from 4,500, I've already earned 1,500 1, in one run. So you can do this multiple times uh, with whatever loot that you have as long as it's not, you know, stolen goods. So stolen goods, you could not uh, sell to the refugees as long as you have like items that are not stolen you can just sell it back to them and then defeat them and then uh loot the items and then sell it back to the black market so that is the best way currently in game for you to earn a lot of crowns now the fourth tip and trick that we're going to be talking about is having a balanced roster so the game itself allows you to have multiple companions in your roster. So what you're going to do is you have like multiple types of units that you could uh, recruit into your roster. There are rangers, there are swordsmen, there are brutes, there are warriors, as well as uh, rangers and archers. So what you're going to do is 
each of these units have their own profession and each of them have their own abilities. Uh, like for example, each one of them have their own set of skills and each one of them have like specific roles to play in the game itself. So for example, the best, the most dealing, uh, the most DPS uh, character in the game itself is Rangers. So Rangers have like the most highest DPS in the whole entire game. Like they can dish out like a lot of damage with, within one turn. And then uh, for example, the Brutes, they have like, uh, the highest amount of uh, HP they have in the whole game. And each character have like different type of uh, attributes. So what we're going to do is, you need to make sure that the units that you have are, you know, of appropriate profession and appropriate roles and attributes. You don't want to have like, you know, uh, like a full roster of archers. That That is not going to help you because like a full roster of archers is not going to help you at, as all, at all because they are not going to be penetrating enough armor. They're not going to be able to uh, tank for your whole front line. They're not going to be able to dish out enough damage. So you need to have a balanced roster, you know, like have like maybe, you know, two brutes, two swordsmen, uh, maybe spearman or maybe an archer or two archers. You need to make sure that you have like a balanced roster. So this is actually up to you, you know, regarding uh, building, uh, regarding you building your uh, perfect roster. It's up to you. But it is always best to remember that you're going to be, you know, using this roster to, uh, these companions to, to play for a long run and then you, you need to make sure that each character is able to survive for the long run. Fifth tip that I'm going to be talking about is ponies. Because in the game itself, they are weight. So for example, my current weight is 344. So my companion's capacity is 344. Because each companion has uh, weight limits. So for example, this companion's carrying capacity is 7 uh, 7 units of weight and then this is 16 units of weight but the most uh, carrying capacity that you can get from a unit will be ponies because ponies are one of the units that you can get in the game that acts as your uh, carrying, carrying companion so basically they carry loot for you so they have like the highest amount of carrying capacity so what you're going to do is when you're playing the game you want to make sure that you have a lot of ponies I mean enough ponies for you to carry your loot that is if you have too many ponies you're gonna have to feed you know more food to them because each one of them requires you to have two food consumption for them so the more ponies you have the more food consumption is going to be the next tip and trick that we're going to be talking about is cooking so the game itself has like all sorts of food for you to you know feed your companions so what you're going to do is you're going to have to like uh, you know acquire food enough food for your companions. So the best way for you to acquire enough food for your companions is for you to go to your village, to any town or any uh, city that sells stuff. So what we're going to do is you're going to buy whatever salt and wheat they have because with salt and wheat, you're going to be able to make bread and it's, and it's really easy to make bread. So salt is one of the most important ingredients for you to make food because when you have like, uh, when, you, when you research enough uh, stuff you will be able to you know uh, make different sort of food and all of them require salt so you're gonna have to get a lot of salt for it so make sure that you purchase uh, excess amount of salt excess amount of wheat this is all going to help you in the long run to provide for your companions because this is going to be one of the best uh, food source for you to hold your your units for a long run the next tip that i'm going to be talking about is pythons so pythons are actually a sort of item that lets you uh, navigate through like, you know, rough terrains that you are not able to cross. Maybe you have to take, you know, a really long, uh, long way to get to a, get to a position. So what we're going to do is use pythons. So what, what this does is, for example, I'm at this cliff and I would like to, you know, uh, head back to the lakeside camp. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a python and placed it somewhere that is, you know, that allows me to place. Like for example, this place allows me to place it. I'm going to place it here. And I have access from this cliff down to the cliff. You see? So this is actually a really good uh, 
technique for you to you know have shortcuts from one place to another place so that you don't have to run a really long distance and this actually helps you to save time save uh, energy as well as uh, uh, avoiding any unwanted uh, parties that might actually attack you that is actually a really good technique for you to do and you should always use this whenever possible so that is all for the tips and tricks so if there are any tips and tricks that i have not placed uh, into the video itself i will place it in the next video or any comments that you like to provide do leave your comments down below and if there are any questions like for example uh you have like difficulty regarding certain quests or anything just let me know and then if i have the answer i'll let you know about it so if you enjoyed this uh, video regarding the tips and tricks on how to make your very best mercenary group in war tales do leave a like and subscribe to the channel thank you so much for watching through the video i hope you have a nice day bye bye